let me run through a few of these little um, ABTs I got because I, I spotted, I think, some kind of interesting things in them. And let's see, we've got about maybe 10 minutes to do this. Uh, this is what we do at the end of the demo day. We call it an ABT build session. And what we have is everybody in the group writes their own ABTs. And then I just do like an hour and a half of this sort of freeform stuff. So okay was our first <laughs> brave volunteer. And uh, you, actually, you could, oh, um, you, you want to, um, yeah, why don't you come up here and, and you could read it. So here is um, what she sent yesterday. So um, can you read that? Yes. Okay, so here we go. It's kind of long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gave two minutes to it. Wildfires are among most salient hazards with devastating impacts in California as well as the rest of the world. And there are existing computational models, IoT technologies, and data science methods for fire modeling. But there is a need for a cyber infrastructure platform that can integrate these components. Therefore, the Wi-Fi lab develops integrated infrastructure and systems for natural hazards monitoring, simulation, and decision support. Perfect, <laughs> okay, great. Um, and so, yeah, you can have a seat there. First off, I don't think anybody was confused or bored by that. That's the first great thing about the ABT is it makes it so concise that nobody's lost and everything's accurate in here. So that's all good. But now, let me point out some, this, this took me an hour or so. Brian came over yesterday and we read through these and he kind of helped me find some notes in them. And some of these things, I think we were doing this live in a demo day. I wouldn't have caught this. It was later last night that I looked at it again and realized um, this is very interesting. So um, in, in Hollywood, in screenwriting, this is one of the fundamental principles. When you're writing a story, you're talking about a character, you're telling the journey of this character who's fighting for some big goal. You break it down into wants versus needs. So the character wants something. That's the big, broad, general human thing that they're trying to achieve in the world. And then what do they need to achieve that? So for example, maybe I tell you, I want to save the world, make it a wonderful place. And what I need to be able to do that is I need to be elected president. So that's your fundamental difference between wants versus needs. And then I start taking a look at what you've got here. And so here's the first thing that we do is um, color code these things. Blue is usually for the, um, the setup there. And red is for the, the problem statement, the contradiction, the but. And green usually for the therefore. And take a look at what you have there for the but. What's fascinating is look at the, the word you've got in there. You have the word need right in there. And what you've said here is, but there's a need for cyber infrastructure platform that can integrate these components. But now think about that. That's actually the tool that's needed. What's the more broad want? And that's kind of in the other part of the red there that can integrate these components. That's your want. We want to integrate the components. What do you need to be able to do that? Does that make sense? And so this is, this is what we do with the ABT, you know, and it seems trivial, but every little bit that you can tweak these things, adding them, getting them tighter, makes the logic better. The bigger part of the audience can follow you. So here's what I would suggest in a rewrite of that is rewrite the but part and say, but at present, this is the real problem, a lack of integration um, of these components resulting in inefficiency, something to that effect, does that make sense? And, and one of the fascinating things we found, story circles, that I'm gonna, it's not in my books yet, but I'm gonna write about this, is I think there's a huge difference between verbal versus written formulation of these sorts of things. So over and over again, people will, um, and you're not in your head, you've seen this before. Write you're right, exactly. People will write their ABTs and they'll be long and convoluted and things like that. And then we'll start in this thing and I'll come over and say, okay, what's, what's the basic problem here? And they'll start to look down and I'll say, no, don't look down. Just look at me, tell me off the top of your head, what's the basic problem? And they'll come out with something like this, you know, well, we can't integrate the components like in five words and the whole group will go, wow, that's so clear. And something goes on with the brain where verbally quite often you can say these things much more directly and clearly than as soon as you start writing, you just start turning them into spaghetti. So that's how I would probably suggest as a first draft rewrite on this, which is um, you move the need down to here. And in fact, you've probably got more detail than you need right there on um, integrated infrastructure systems, national model, blah, blah, blah. Not sure we need all, all that for this concise statement. It, isn't that all kind of encaptured by just cyber infrastructure platform? Those are all the specifics of it. So for something like this, if you wanted to be pretty concise, that's sort of what I would suggest. Um, at present, the problem is a lack of integration. Um, therefore, we're developing this tool, which will solve this problem. Is that making sense? Uh, I thought that was kind of fun because I've never had an example like this that hit on that wants versus needs thing because that's straight out of Hollywood, but that's a lot of what I've tried to do is pull these things out of high. By the way, what, for the sake of Brian and me, what is IoT technologies? <laughs> the what? 
I knew that when I knew Oh, jeez. <laughs> Maybe you are more of a scientist than I am. Okay. Um, here's another one. We've got a few more minutes. Uh, Grant Miller. So let's see. Uh, can you read it from there? Okay. People might not understand my accent, but I'll try. Uh, online citizen science has been around for most of the 21st century, and it has benefited thousands of researchers. But setting up an online citizen science project is expensive and time consuming. Therefore, the Zooniverse has built a free and open platform that enables anyone to build a project quickly. Great. Okay. And one of the great things with the ABT, use this with your graduate students, and you don't really even need to give them forewarning. Um, say, okay, right now, off the top of your head, I want you to tell me this one sentence, and but therefore, and they say, well, I need some time. No, you really don't. Just give it a shot, push them. First thing you'll see is their eyeballs roll back in their head as they're starting, and that's the narrative part of their brain activating. Okay, how am I gonna set this thing up? What is the problem? It's a great exercise to get them starting to clarify what they're doing. I do this a lot with groups of graduate students, just sit around in a circle and have everybody you know, come up with these ABTs. And so on this one, so then this is the first thing that we do, as I said, you know, go use this color coding, identifying the setup statements here and the uh, problem and then the, the solution. And uh, that ABT is really pretty simple and pretty clear. So, you know, I don't have a ton of stuff. To, I think the whole audience followed along just fine with it. But I do have one little suggestion. And keep in mind, all this stuff, it's super subjective. Again, this is not like analytical chemistry or whatever. This is dealing with a lot of variability and it's got an art element to it and it's kind of optimization. But here's one little thought I had on this, which is um, the goal with the ABT is that you work on it so long and hard that every single word in there is there for a reason. There's no extraneous stuff, there's no repetition, um, everything is needed. And so when you start to look at this, um, look at the first part, online citizen science has been around for most 21st century uh, and it's benefited thousands of researchers, but setting up online citizen projects expensive and time consuming. Um, could you be more specific here? And here's one of the things that we've kind of uncovered in working with this ABT is all else equal. And this is my buddy Park Howell with that podcast, actually. He's worked a lot with it now. And we're constantly having long discussions. Seems to be two main things you want to get up front in your setup. And, and this is the context for your whole project, which is you want to begin by getting us into the ordinary world. What is the basic system that you're working in? And then if possible, can you tell us what's at stake why is this important? This is the thing I always had trouble with my proposals when I was a scientist, was failing to make a compelling case for why do we even need to fund this research? It's so important for uh, research proposals. And so those two elements. Um, now we take a look at what you've got here. And you've got online citizen science been around for most 20th century. Um, is that a really crucial piece of information to this narrative? It's kind of interesting background, whatever. But if we're really trying to make the case about um, your problem, which is that it's expensive and time consuming. Don't know that that's that essential. Um, and even the fact that, well, it's benefited thousands, that is part of why, why it's um, uh, valuable, what's at stake. So here's what I might suggest as a little bit of a, a restructuring of it. Uh, organizations, and, and you tell me if this makes any sense, organizations form citizen science groups and the benefits can include whatever three big attributes that you think of, larger data sets, community participation, inexpensive science. The, the power of storytelling rests in the specifics. So a lot of times you don't want to get into a lot of details of these things, but one or two or three specifics can help make them much more powerful. And that's what I would suggest there because that's starting to give us a clear idea of how it benefits actually. So your, your version said it's benefited thousands. If we can get into these specifics right here, which isn't going on too long, then we can really see, wow, you're right. That's really powerful and beneficial. As a matter of fact, what you really want it's kind of like the core um, dynamic of all communication is don't tell us, show us. Can you show us some data? Can you show us these attributes that are going to result in us saying, wow, that benefits a lot of people with those sorts of things? Then I would think you'd say that um, and then follow into the but setting up is expensive and time consuming. Um, I don't know. Does that make sense or not? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, so we, we can go back and forth on that. Um, but that's, that's what you do in this process. And it seems like, you know, splitting hairs, but actually every little bit is super important. The key dynamic is you're wanting to make a statement that is both concise, as short as possible, and yet still retaining enough substance to be compelling. And last one we'll do here is Jeanette. Um, and Jeanette there. Okay, great. Um, and let's see. You want, you want to read this to us? Can you see it from there? Sure. The rate of ice sheet melting is not well understood and... Several scientific com communities are studying it by collecting data and by computational modeling. But these communities of scientists are not well unified 
Therefore, we are trying to build a gateway that will allow these scientists to make progress on characterizing this problem. Okay, great. Um, so let's take a look at your setup there. Um, and this is what um, I was wondering if there's a little bit of redundancy in what you've got in the setup and the statement of the problem. And in fact, try this out. The study of ice sheet melting is multidisciplinary, which is sort of what you're saying there. Um, and then why does it matter if it's multidisciplinary? What do we know about the characteristics of multidisciplinary science? Um, we know that multidisciplinary studies require a unified approach. And then we get to the but, and the but is, uh, but this isn't happening for um, sheeting melting, sorry, <laughs> typo there, for melting, ice, um, but ice, ice sheets melting uh, because of, and therefore we're delving gateway. So it's about boiling it down and trying to get it to the least number of words and one of the basic dynamics that we've also uncovered is that the quicker you can get through the A and the B, the more we'll let you have all day on the T. And you can go on and on because if you can get us through a little bit of setup and get us right to the core of what the problem is, then we're engaged with you now and we may not even agree with you and the approach you're taking, you're there for. But we're now really listening and which, okay, now I know what the problem is. Are they taking the approach I would take? And if not, why not? And now you got a whole discussion. But the mistake that gets made is if you go on and on with the and, 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 and then you get in the butt and you present three different problems that you're working on, you've lost this after a while. So there's a whole, as I said, almost fractal nature of this thing that people talk about nested ABTs. And you can, if you start us off with a simple one that pulls us right in, then down the line, you can give us more ABTs and get us in these other facets. That's the art of the whole thing. It takes so much time working on it, distilling it. But that's what you eventually want is really well ABT structured material that's just constantly working this problem solution dynamic at all different scales. And ultimately, this is the big challenge for scientists, is can you find the singular narrative because the world of narrative and storytelling and all that sort of stuff, our brains are programmed for the singular narrative. They really have a hard time and social psychologists are beginning to do studies that, that reveal this. And one last little tip I'll give you here if you're really deep on this stuff. There's a tremendous paper in 2009 by Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times, three-time Pulitzer Prize winner, that in all places is published in Outside Magazine, and the title of it is Nicholas Kristof Saves the World. And that article from 2009 is, I try and reread it every few months. It is so good and powerful. And in there, he draws on some of the social psychology literature, a few little experiments and things to show you things like this, this singular narrative. The idea that um, he, he talks about public health campaigns in, in Africa, and that if you even tell the story of two people, it's less powerful than the story of one person. Everything in narrative comes boiling down to the power of the one. There's a kind of semi shallow book that was a bestseller in 2012 called The One Thing. And it's all about, you know, you got to figure out what's the one thing, the central singular narrative. That's how narrative works. And the problem for scientists, as you know, is you're raised your whole science life to cherish the large data set. And you end up with this deep intuitive feeling like more is more. And you know, I wanna hear 10 stories instead of just the one. And I think that's a really fundamental cultural divide in the mindset of the science world with this narrative world. And it's really tough to resolve, but it is, if you put in enough time, I think you can crack the nut and solve these sorts of things. So that's um, enough for this morning. Hopefully everybody got these cards, which are just kind of a synopsis, the ABT framework stuff that we use in our workshops. And I'm around for the next couple hours. And then, as I said, please send me emails. I love hearing thoughts and comments and discussion. And uh, come on up, ask questions if you got anything. So thank you. Hope that was worthwhile. Yeah.